out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Base hit. Out. Ball ball. That's a double. Out. Here's a better shot of the contacts that work the main power. When your coin slide pushes in, this lever closes these electrical contacts and catches right here on a little ledge to hold the contacts closed. When the relay energizes, it pulls back away from this ledge and lets the switch open up. Down here is an underneath view of where your bat is connected. One of the things that the motor does is reset the bat so you'll see this come backwards and that's cocking the bat and getting it ready to go. And then when you want to take a swing and you push the handle on the front of the cabinet, you're pushing down on this lever and letting the bat go so it can swing. So I'll push this lever and start the game and you'll watch the bat reset. So now once it's reset, you can take a swing by pushing down on the lever. So on a swing, that'll swing the bat. And then it will automatically reset. The motor will stop on the third out when the balls come down this trough and hit this micro switch. This micro switch triggers the relay that got set up first when you put the coin slide, push the coin slide in. And when the balls come past and trigger that micro switch, they energize the relay, which trips the lever and shuts the power off. So here's the third out. As the balls went past here, they shut the motor off. Game over. Here with the motor running, you can see the mechanism that resets the bat. This rod resets the bat. My bat's attached here. I'll swing the bat and that will reset. Reset the bat. If I swing, reset. And a closer view. Reset the bat. I'll swing. Now it has to be reset. A triple! Taking a look underneath, the balls are all waiting in a trough that I have removed right now, but the balls are lined up waiting for this hole to come by. Right there. And that picks up the next ball and takes it up to the base of the ump. The game uses 15 steel ball bearings. Each one is 3 quarters of an inch in diameter. They line up in this trough waiting to get loaded into the flywheel. And if you tug on this shaft, you will empty your balls in a hurry. Now listen, who is not pitching? I'll who break is... your arm, you say, who's on first? So the ball would go right in there. If I remove this plate, so you can see inside, when I start the motor, the ball will be delivered here first and then loaded in to go up to the umpire. There's the ball going up to the ump, gives to the pitcher, and pitcher throws. Here you can watch the pitcher and how he gets cocked back and then sprung into action. There's a torsion spring right here. So that cocks him back, and then when he lets go, he throws the ball. Watch the pitcher as he changes position every time he throws to you, and the ump will call balls and strikes. What's the pitcher's name? What's on second? I don't know. Go that 
was a strike. This cam has several bumps on it, and every time the pitcher pitches one ball, the cam is incremented and moves to a new position. And as it moves to each position, each time the pitcher throws, he's changing his angle at which he's pitching the ball to you. So that's simulating a curved ball, straight ball, or fastball. You see it change positions here. Right before he pitches. On the back side of this cam are detents that a ball bearing rests in. And that ball bearing is sitting on the end of this spring, spring-loaded. Ball bearing sits here, locks into one of the detents, so it holds the position of this cam each time it increments. Here you can see the cam getting incremented each time the pitcher throws the ball. Let's see if he throws a ball this time. Oh, that's a ball. Oh, he threw another ball. What will he throw this time? Another ball. I got three balls, no strikes. Let's see what he does this time. Oh, he straightens back out, throws a strike. Four balls. This bushing has a knurled edge and it's also eccentric. There's more sticking out on one side than the other. So if the pitcher is not throwing the ball correctly, maybe always off more to one side than the other, you can loosen this screw and by grabbing onto the knurl you can turn this eccentric bushing and it'll change his position ever so slightly to line him up better with the bat. Once every rotation of this flywheel you'll see this zigzag back and forth one time. And it happens right as the pitcher pitches the ball you get a zigzag back and forth. And that's by the linkage right down here. There's the zigzag. That zigzag motion is grabbing right here and pushing this back and forth. And that plate moving back and forth is your outfielders. A double! Coming off the bottom side of the bat there is some linkage going over to a gate. And when the bat is cocked back, ready to go. The gate is in this position. Now any balls down this trough are strikes. Any balls here and here are balls that where four balls will get you a base hit. Once you swing the bat, the gate changes positions. So now any ball that gets past you because you swung will be directed here, which is a strike. Let's look at how four balls become a base hit. This will be my first ball. Goes right in. Second ball. Third ball. Fourth ball will clear these out and the fourth ball takes a different route behind and comes out to become a base hit. The balls are being held in place by this 
small lever arm and the strikes are being held in plate by the edge of this trough. Both of these are all connected together to a big trough in back which gets activated every time you get an out. When you get an out the plate or the assembly pivots moves down and allows the balls to clear out from your balls and strikes. When a new game is started pushing the coin slide in also pushes on this lever which runs across and pushes down on here and clears out your runs and hits. So pushing down on this clears them out. And there's just weights on there that allow them to get pulled backwards. Rapola used more than one type of gearbox or worm gear reduction. Uh, this one has the motor running a gear here which transfers down to a gear running front to back and then transfers up to this back gear and that drives the big flywheel. With the play field removed you can see there is one series of channels or troughs that take care of all of your base hits fall right into there and this is a lower set of channels sitting directly above this is another set of channels and these take care of all of your catches or, or your outs from the different outfielders and foul balls come down this channel and this now one. both sets of channels are in place. So you can see an upper set and a lower set underneath. It lights up when you start the game. Got an out. And that's 1937 Rockola World Series. For more information, visit gameroomrepair.com.